Hi and welcome back to another Whiteboard Wednesday with me, Sam Ashdown. And me, Phil Jones from Firewave. And today we're going to be talking to you about five steps to conduct the perfect viewing. Now I wrote a blog post about this about two years ago and it's been super popular and it's something we get asked about all the time because we talk all the time about lead generation, don't we? But actually, you know, you've got the house on and now you need to sell it. Yeah, no point in generating these amazing leads and then not being able to do anything with them. Yeah, so we're going to take you through the five steps to a perfect viewing. Yeah, and these, uh, number one, also differentiates us from a lot of local agents and it's making sure you give uh, the potential buyer the time, um, the time to look around in their at their pace. Um, some of our homes are 3,000, 4,000 square feet. Uh, it can take a good hour, an hour and a half, two hours um, for that particular buyer to look around, get comfortable with their surroundings um, and know everything they need to know to make an offer. The last thing we want is them to forget certain bits or have objections in their head that uh, they can't overcome. So make sure you don't put the views back to back. Um, if you are going to have two views on the same home, um, although it's great to have them cross over and, and to see each other for scarcity, uh, make sure they have the time to be able to relax in the home and understand how they would feel living there and, and uh, give them time to appreciate it. Yeah, and I think that we've, we've noticed, haven't we, that the longer a, a, a viewer spends in a house, the more likely they are to make an offer, and that's the point. Yeah. And by the way, these five things are things that we actually talk in our vowels about yeah. to our vendors. Um, just want to say something about not getting there at the 11th hour as well. At one minute to the viewing time. Yeah, so I, just from a personal experience, um, we've recently gone through the process of buying a house and... Not us. <laughs> no, <laughs> me and my wife, which isn't Sam. Um, and every single home we went to, we arrived, if not before, at the same time as the person showing the home. Um, they would open the door and basically have no idea about, about the house. What our team are trained to do is arrive at least 15 minutes before, if not half an hour before, all the lights on where they should be, um, everything prepared, so they're not eating. clapping, they're not, they're not panicking, mm -hmm. eating yet, uh, the fire, they're not panicking, they can, they're relaxed too, because if you're panicking when you arrive, the viewers will feel uncomfortable, but if you're there, nice and relaxed, um, with lots of time on your hands, um, to not forget anything important, then it will go a lot smoother. Yeah, and we've all had those occasions where you get to the front door and the key is a little bit dodgy. Or you forget the key. Or you forget, which has happened to me. And me. Yeah, I still have the key, it's just with somebody that's <laughs> just on another house, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so that was number one, um, allow enough time. Number two is to lead with purpose. The idea isn't that the viewers are deciding how they look at this house. This is your house, you've got to be in control. You're doing the absolute best for your client, which is the seller of the house, so you need to lead the viewing. Now, we had a, a house just a, a week ago where I was showing one of our team members exactly how I wanted that house shown, and the, the vendor, the owner, was listening to every single word I said, and I was giving a reasons why I wanted it shown in that order, because I wanted to create an impact in every single room, and even things like which front door we mm -hmm. use, because sometimes there's more, more choices than just one door, isn't there? Um, and so we're very particular about those two. So make sure you're in control of the viewing. And something I do on the very rare occasions I do a viewing is when I go into the lobby with them, into the hallway, uh, I'll, I'll make sure they've got a floor plan in front of them because if it's a big house, they're gonna lose track of the rooms. It happens to us mm -hmm. sometimes. So I normally say, right, okay, downstairs we've got these rooms and I just very quickly describe them. Upstairs we've got four bedrooms, three bathrooms. So we'll start downstairs and then we'll do, and I'll come along to this, and then we'll maybe do the garden, then we'll come back up and go up to the upstairs. So it's about leading for the best way for that house to make sure that you're in control of that viewing and that you're showing the house in the best possible way. And that leads me on to really the next step, which is to avoid the garden close. This is really easy to do. It's a really easy trap to fall into. You've done the viewing on the house, you go out to the garden, you're standing there, they can see their car and they go, okay, thanks, bye. And you know, if you just had one go round and it's a million pound house, they haven't made a decision. And if they have, it's probably not favorable to you. So give that house the best possible chance to shine by showing them again, showing them the house again. And the best way of doing that, you can either do the downstairs and then outside. And quite often some of the outside rooms, thinking about the same house here, really links to the outside, doesn't it? Really beautiful, you know, big bifold doors. You go straight outside. It's very natural to enjoy that inside outside experience come back in and then do the upstairs. 
So that's about avoiding the garden clothes really. But if it's, a, if it's a wet day and you can't do that, you have to do the inside and then the outside. When you're standing in the lobby at the very beginning, you say to them, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the downstairs, then the upstairs, then the garden, which we'll do quickly, I've got an umbrella. We'll come back inside into the kitchen and then you can have a look around by yourself. So again, you're still leading it and you're avoiding that garden clothes. And um, anyone coming to do a house, generally speaking, feels uncomfortable. Um, and they feel uncomfortable because they have no idea how it's going to play out. So as soon as you set it out, mm -hmm. it, they automatically um, become a lot more comfortable and they don't just do what all viewers do and walk to the window. Um, <laughs> they know what's going to happen, they don't have to second guess it and um, it allows them to take in that, the size and the, um, the quality of the home rather than just feel uncomfortable. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, number four came about because we were trying to overcome the challenge of um, our clients not knowing what's happening at every single stage. So the worst thing in any industry for any of us is not knowing something, whether it's, um, you know, if someone was, was really interested in the home or wasn't interested at all, as something as, as that, that owner could spend that evening buying their next dream house thinking that there's a possibility yeah. that that owner, that the viewer that day was really interested. And in reality, they hated it, they were out in 10 <laughs> seconds. So. We now leave uh, what we call a viewing card. So it's a simple A5 piece of card with a picture it's on the back. It's a postcard basically, isn't it? Postcard, yeah. yeah. And on the front is uh, five faces. One of them is a real happy face, <laughs> and, and they slowly go down to a really sad face. Mm -hmm. What we tell our team to do is never use the happiest and never use the saddest. We've all had those viewers that tell you how amazing the house is, they're going to put an offer next morning and we never hear from them ever again. <laughs> Be careful not to get burnt with that. If you stick to the middle three, um, there's always somewhere to go. But if they get the card and it's their own happy face, they're not going to be pleased with that, but they can move on to the next viewing. They can, uh, you know, it feels okay. If they get a happy face, they know there's a, a possibility. And we might still want to, well, we will still want to seek feedback yeah, from, from the clients. Yes. But, I mean, this might be the first of 15 hours of viewing that we can. So it's, it's instant feedback. So they get, there's a viewing, the owners come back when you've moved on. Um, there'll be a nice postcard on the fireplace that they can pick up and say, um, they love the garden, the house was too small, or, yeah. you know, they know yeah. uh, at, at that point. And that was there to avoid any uncertainty. Um, and then obviously next morning we give them the, the full feedback. It also allows uh, the, the person who's done the viewing, so a member of our team, to be able to say, is this on the short list or is it, is it a definite no? Just so I can tell the owners. And you get a really good bit of feedback at that point because they're going to go, it's not for us. Or, yeah, it could be on the short list, actually. And then it gives you another conversation starter mm. when you then phone them in a few days' time when they've looked at a few more houses. Yeah, it's a good point to ask the question because um, we've all had those, again, where they walk around looking very concerned, ask deep questions and you come back thinking no and then they, they make an offer <laughs> yeah. um, as opposed to the ones we discussed earlier where they love everything and gush about everything and then disappear. They're always um, the vendor viewings aren't they? Where yeah. the vendor goes they, they loved it, they loved every yeah. single room and you go well they didn't really but they didn't tell you the truth. Yeah they walked down, the other ones they, they walked out with me, the vendor was there and then they went I hated it <laughs> and they walked around saying I love that and that. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, number five. Number five is the offer. So never be afraid if it feels comfortable and right and, and the, um, they've given the impression that they, they love it, to ask for an offer there and then. Especially if there's viewings um, throughout the day or the next day to try and create some kind of scarcity. Um, but a lot of our homeowners, sorry, a lot of our buyers like to make offers there and then. Um, our second viewing numbers is low. I'd say less than 10% of homes that we sell actually go through a second viewing. Do you think it's because they're discretionary buyers in the main? I don't know, it's crazy. Yeah, it is a bit people, crazy. People test drive a, car, a 30 grand car 10 times if I decide to buy them, but they'll buy a million pound house or a half an hour viewing. Um, but just be prepared, prepared to ask yeah. the question and at least you'll get another insight. So if, if you say, look, I'm gonna look at my numbers and I'll come back to you tomorrow, or there'll be, there'll be some kind of question, oh, I, no, I, I'm, we're not gonna make an offer, it's not right for us. And, and the owners will love it. If you say, look, I asked them about an offer, they weren't quite ready, mm -hmm. but it's something that we'll consider, then just the fact that you've been dynamic and bold enough to ask, your, your um, owners will love that, your clients. Yeah. 
Okay, fantastic. Those are our five steps to the perfect viewing. Hopefully you'll be selling houses like we're going out of fashion uh, before too long. So if you'd like to know more about what Firewave can do for you to get you through the door in the first place, because no point me else to do a beautiful, perfect viewing if you haven't got any houses to list, then please go to fire-wave.co.uk forward slash start and that will give you the opportunity to put in your area and find out if it's available. And if it is, we'll be straight on the phone and we'll be talking to you about if and how we can help you get through the best homes in your area. Yep. Bye for now.